I remember this one time over the summer that I was cutting hair and I seen a couple and they were standing about 10 feet from me and instantly I seen they were out of place. A couple feet in front of them, they see one guy shooting another guy up in the neck. They see people literally laying in the gutter, smoking crack out in the open, shooting up out in the open, you know, and this was summertime. You're seeing literally holes in people's arms and people's legs and this is what they're witnessing. They were from Lebanon, PA, which is about two hours from Kensington. And they were looking for their son. They had never heard of Kensington. They had never seen any of the videos on YouTube. They had never seen any of the stories on the news. I started looking at things now and I was like, damn, imagine if I'm them, what they're seeing for the first time. I'm seeing people that look like they're dead. You know, everybody nodded off and awkward positions that you damn near have to be a contortionist to get into. You're seeing that every so many feet. All the needles, people walking with blood running down their neck. It's hard to describe and it's hard to fathom. And as a parent, as a father, I instantly related to them. I said, damn, imagine if I never knew anything about Kensington. Ground zero of our local heroin epidemic lies in the heart of Philadelphia's Kensington section. Kensington. Kensington. The drugs were the motive for a shooting in Kensington this morning. There are drug users from all over line the streets and make shift the area in Kensington, about this haven for drug addicts. Hooked on heroin in Kensington. Dumped ground zero for Philadelphia's heroin epidemic. Mark is on the front lines of the nation's heroin epidemic with evidence of battles lost. Scattered like a weeds. Drug raid nets big results in Kensington. Along Residents with guns struggling with drug addiction may soon have a place to safely inject themselves. Open air with drug drugs. abuse in Kensington is just not hard to find. Philadelphia's opioid crisis is far from over. I'll face that way. I don't want to get nobody in the background. Uh, so are you only you can ask me to uh, No, oh, just right here. My name is Frank Rodriguez. I was born in Brooklyn, New York. I have a YouTube channel called Morals Over Money. And through that channel, my hopes are to humanize addicts, people that deal with addiction, people that deal with homelessness, Always, this, this is always busy. This, this really don't change too much. So I'm originally from New York. I, um, I grew up in Brooklyn. The area I grew up at the time was just like this. It was uh, called the South Side. And uh, it was just like this. It was an open air drug market. You know, my family was, my mother and my father were both addicts. Um, pretty much everybody in the household was addicts, addicted to heroin at the time. I moved to Pennsylvania when I was about eight years old. And um, I ended up coming to Philadelphia for the first time in probably 2000, excuse me, 1990, maybe like 94. and. When I, when I ended up coming out here, I was in the midst of my addiction. Um, and I picked up for the first time uh, soon after my mother was killed in a car accident. I had to identify her body on, on uh, you know, that day um, at the coroner's office. And I tried to go to sleep that night and I couldn't sleep. Next night, couldn't sleep. So a family member that was a nurse recommended that I take something to uh, calm my nerves and told me, look, it's common, you know, when people are experiencing grief or a loss, that's what they do. So I took it, put me to sleep good. Um, that eventually led to taking Percocets. Percocets eventually led to, you know, doing heroin.
Yo. Look, needle still in his, in his hand. Needle in his neck. All bags around him. Yo. You alright, man? Gotta get up off the ground, brother. You got your sneaker up on you over there. You got meat on your hand. Yeah. Look like you got a couple bags right there next to you, too. When I initially moved out of Kensington, um, it was the day after I heard my oldest right. daughter's heartbeat. Me and her mother went to the doctor. I heard my daughter's heartbeat for the first time and I started crying. I just got high, I just shot up right before we went to the appointment. I realized that very shortly, there was a little baby that was gonna be coming into that world that was relying on me. And if she would have came that day, I would have been highly unfit to be her father. She didn't get a choice to say, I want my dad to be a drug addict. I want my dad to have, a, to have an addiction to heroin. And I realized that things quickly had to change. Literally that night, we left the doctor appointment. I packed up my stuff and left my apartment. I told myself I gotta, I, I have to leave. If I don't leave, I might not be alive to leave the next time that I want to. Tighten up, bro. And then he got it. He was happy. In 2016, in Kensington, I would go do haircuts for the addicts and the homeless and the less fortunate. And then when I was using drugs, I was at, you know, some of the lowest points of my life. I feel like that helps me to relate to people um, a little bit more than others maybe. So when I go to Kensington and I give somebody a haircut, I'm not worried about touching them. I'm not worried about how dirty they are. I'm not worried about if they stink. I'm not worried about if they're nodding off. Um, I still see a human being under there because I know at one time that was me. I was very strict on not letting them take pictures or video or anything. And one day one of the individuals did like a Facebook live and the person I was cutting, that person's mother ended up reaching out to me later on that night. She hadn't seen her son in four years. She didn't know if he was alive or dead. And she said that was the first sighting of him, first that she knew he was okay. She asked me to please continue to do it. So, you know, I was like, nobody wants to be seen in this type of condition. And then I started to realize that I was sort of looking at it selfishly and there was family members back home that are thinking every single night, going to sleep, not knowing if their son or their loved one is dead, alive, what type of condition they are. And that's originally how I started doing the, the videos and the interviews. It, it, it was by accident. The price of life in Kensington is very cheap. The people, the addicts there, they're not viewed as human beings. They're looked at as part of the landscape. I often try to come up with words or a way to express Kensington, to describe to people just exactly what it is. Hell, hell. Like a war zone? Makes sense. Uh, like a third world country kind of thing? Kensington's gonna eat them up and spit them out. <laughs> Literally hell. Suffering? Ugly, <laughs> yep. all of that, it's sad. They're gonna come back 
torn. It's just chaos. It's it's so like it, it's so far out of the realm of what we think normal life is supposed to be. You see people with blood running down their neck all the time. It looks like they got bit by a vampire. And you see them running around with a needle in their hand, point uncovered. In Kensington, that's you know, that's that's normal. I see the drug addiction, I see the drug dealing, I see the violence, I see the poverty, but I think most of all I see pain. You know, that that's what you see there. You see, I think, humanity at its lowest. Me overdosing is what made me get clean and, and changed my life. You know, I, I had a bad weekend. I relapsed a single use. I used one time. I sniffed a bag and I woke up in the hospital three days later. For me, that's why I see people overdose and I see people stretched out and laid out and I wanna go there and just be like, yo, you all right? Cause you'll never know. You know, that, that's all it took for me to completely change my life, 180 degrees. Um, you know, where maybe there's, there's other people that are like that also. You know, and maybe not, but 